What does it mean for UK consumers if we put these two businesses together? Because other mergers in the sector, maybe where they operated more in exactly the same space, have been blocked. This is more about converged services across a number of different consumer uh, uh, products. And, and, and maybe this one stands to, stands to, to, to fare a little better with regulators. What, what does this mean for the UK consumer? Yeah, hi, that's right. Yeah, I mean, as you say, I mean, uh, O2 is substantially some mobile operated 21 million or so customers and Virgin Media really a kind of TV and broadband company with about 5 million or so customers. So it's a complimentary deal. Um, there'll be overlap between the customer bases. And what they'll be hoping to do is offer those customers a better deal by bringing their mobile and their broadband service together. Uh, so, you know, you might still end up paying more for the two together as a customer. But, you know, when, when you can add up them separately, you're getting a discount to it. So um, that's kind of going to be really one of the main things they're going to be trying to do. And I think that's definitely something that regulators will be looking at. I think this kind of deal usually doesn't um, attract too much scrutiny from regulators. But, you know, their, their ambition is to kind of protect the consumers. I think they'll be wanting to see the right messages about offering better value to UK consumers. Yeah, of course, they want to protect competition. How badly is this going to hit the competition? How um, hard will rivals be affected? Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to make uh, BT, Vodafone and Sky all sit up and think about how they're running their businesses, you know, that they're all potentially at risk of these kind of more compelling uh, com converged offers that the O2 and Virgin Media might put to customers. You know, there's going to be overlaps so in running into the millions of customers uh, for each of these operators. We did some analysis earlier in the week when the news first broke that you know, there might be about a billion pounds of BT's consumer revenue uh, that overlaps with the with the this Virgin Media footprint. So yeah, you know, it's gonna take a few years, but you know, definitely these could be sizable sums of money and customers that are at risk for each of these three main competitors. We, we've, apart from this deal, uh, Matthew, we seem to have seen a collapse in global mm. deal making, as you might expect, when there's such uncertainty and such a lack of visibility. I saw that Telefonica withdrew its guidance at the same time as it feels confident enough to go ahead with creating this new joint venture with Liberty Global. That, that's, that seems a, an incredible state of affairs, I suppose. Um, it does to some degree. Actually, we had BT results today, and they cut their dividend too. Uh, and I think perhaps to some extent, in response to this, are um, being more aggressive in their uh, fibre ambitions for the UK market. Um, so it is a difficult time. Um, but I think for Telefonica, one of the reasons they wanted to do this deal because they've got a huge debt pile, and actually the way they're uh, constructing this transaction, they'll actually get money out of the deals. It's a joint venture, and essentially Liberty Global is going to pay to them, you know, maybe five or six billion pounds of money. So for Telefonica, from a financial re-engineering perspective, this is a good deal. Um, I think in terms of other M&A, uh, yeah, there's potentially one or two transactions left that could be done in the UK. Um, and probably the, the one that people have talked about most from here now would be whether Sky, which is obviously now owned by the US Comcast um, cable operator, might do something with Vodafone, because everybody thought for years that Vodafone was going to be the one that merged with Virgin Media in the UK. So the fact that the Virgin have gone with O2 puts Vodafone slightly out in the cold. So they'll be thinking about what they can do, what they need to do to respond to this on the M&A front.